Hey, this is Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com, and welcome to our very first tutorial using Blackmagic Fusion. This is going to be a quick little demo of how you can use the Primat filter and pretty much clean up your green screen. So, first and foremost, I do want to tell you, in case you didn't know about this, there is a free compositing software called Fusion. And it's put out by Blackmagic. I'm going to jump over here to the screen real quick. And the link is in the description. But there are two versions. There is a free version as well as there is a version that's not free. Everything that I'm going to be showing you is actually done with the free version. Also, where I actually got this footage from is from HollywoodCameraWork.com. And you can download free green screen footage to test out and try out things with. So back to Fusion. So as you can see, our original footage is here and we've got fans and you can see the background and part of the screen that's not actually showing. And what we have in the finished piece is our actress standing, um, well pretty much on a JPEG. It's, she's not standing on a movie or anything like that. But what's pretty cool about this is we are able to clean up the green screen pretty well uh, with the sheer piece of fabric she's playing with. So let me show you how we go about doing this and how you can use the Primat filter. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and stop this. Just simply hit the space bar. All right, I want to make a new document. Now, if you're not familiar with working with Fusion, this little area down here is referred to as the flow. And this is node based. So don't freak out. I'm going to be showing you this step by step. The first thing we want to do is we are going to bring in our footage and we're going to do that via loader. Normally you would say import, but you can either click on the little LD up here at the top or you can simply right click in the flow area, go to tools and then select loader. Now what's going to happen is it's going to show up with all this information. It's going to look at your computer system. Me personally, since I've been playing with this earlier, it does remember where those files are. So I'm going to simply click here. And this is actually a PNG sequence. So I'm simply going to click. And down at the base, you can see even by default, it's selected gather sequences. So this is a sequence of images, but it's looking at looking like pretty much it's one simple file. So go ahead and hit return to bring that in. So our footage is in, but you don't see it. So here's the deal. Up here at the top, by default, you have your two panels where you can actually view things. Now, the way you can take a look at what's happening in each of these, I can select uh, my footage here, it's actually already selected. And you see these little two dots down here at the base. Those are pretty much talking about these two screens at the top. So one of two things, I can either click and drag this straight up to one of the panels here. Okay. And the other thing I can do is pretty much drag this over to the second one. And now if you look at what's happening here. Those two little dots are now filled in. Another way you can do this is while this is selected, I can simply press the number two and it takes out the second window. I can press the number one, it takes out the first window. That same token, I can go ahead and load this simply pressing number one. And that's what I want to do. Now showing this at 100% right now, I simply want to click on fit. And so that shows her at pretty much that little size there. And if I decide to resize this window, it resizes along with it. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to load our primat filter. So while this is selected, I can right click on our footage here. And I want to go up to insert tool come down to mat and select primat. Okay. Now 
Again, we don't see anything in the second one. Quick way we can do this, while Primat is selected, simply press the number two. And again, to make sure this actually fits within the window, we'll click on Fit. Now with Primat selected, I'm gonna look over here in my Tools area, and this is what I wanna show you. By default, the first tab that's showing gives you the option for the Auto Compute. So I'm gonna click this once, and pretty much it's knocked out most of the green. There are some things we need to finish up on here, but I wanna show you just how close we've actually gotten with that one little move. Now, one of the best ways to take a look at how well the keys actually work is to look at the actual alpha channel. So I'm gonna come over here, right on the right-hand corner where it says color, if I click this once, it actually shows the alpha. So anything in black is going to be transparent, anything in white is going to be opaque, and anything gray is going to be translucent. So this makes perfect sense here. If you look at the sheer garment, of course, it's going to be in gray. But we do have a lot of noise back here in the background. So again, with this first tab, I want to come down and select clean background noise. And what I can do is the areas that need to be cleaned up, I'm going to simply just click and drag through that area. And if you note, it all of a sudden cleaned it up and made it a little more solid black. So any of those areas that look a little bit off to me, let's see if I can do a little bit over here. All right, that went a little bit too far. I'm going to undo that last one. Let's do Command Z. All right, so that's about as far as I want to push that, but I am noticing, I'm going to go to 100. And I'm looking a little bit close in the neck area here and it needs a little bit of cleanup so I can go to clean foreground noise and we're just going to draw in that area a little bit. And last but not least, I'm going to click on fit once more. I'm going to go to the mat tab and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to raise the gamma just a little bit. So it's sharpening up that white a little bit, and the threshold, I'll click and bring this in just a little. Just doing a little bit of fine tuning. And that looks pretty decent. All right, now, I'm going to go ahead and click on the A to go back to color. And getting a lot of that cleaned up. So what I want to do now is we've gotten this pretty clean. What I want to do is take a look at uh, cleaning up the extra things we don't want in the shot, like the fan or the background or this little edge here. So what I want to do is make sure nothing is selected in my flow area, nothing in the network is selected. I'm going to come over here to the original composition, and I'm going to set this to 25%, and this way I can see all the edges. So I'm going to click Add a Polyline Mask, and so I'll click up here and just kind of make sure I'm not going to be taking up any of the space where the actress is. And I can go outside of the area, it's not a big deal. So I'm just kind of doing a little beige curve here and drawing that out. And this isn't connected to anything just yet, but what I want to do is this first little area, this is our input, and then the red square here, this is our output. So I'm going to click and drag, 
and I'm going to come down here and find the garbage mat. Now there's several little tabs. There's effect mask, and that I'm basically looking down at the base here. I'm basically looking down at the base here. So what I'm looking for is the garbage mat, and that's the last one here. And as soon as I let go of my mouse, that area has disappeared. So we're throwing this area away. Now, while this polygon is selected, I want to click and add another polyline mask over here for the corner. And if you look in our footage, we don't have that corner anymore. So we got rid of the fan as well as the corner there. All right, so I'm going to click anywhere in my network area or in the flow area and make sure nothing's selected. So there's our character. And the last thing I want to do is I want to bring in a background that she can stand in front of. And to do that, we're going to need to use a merge node. Now at the very top, uh, the first time I looked at this program, I was like, okay, what are all these little things here? These are just little quick buttons you can click on. So I can click on merge. Okay. And I don't want to actually have anything selected right now. I want to deselect that. Um, I do want to load the footage I actually found or the little image I found, a nice little sunset. All right. So what I'm going to do here, I have the merge and there's several tabs here. The top tab, this little green one, is for the foreground. So what I'm going to do is take the out of my prime at and select the foreground. And the next thing here, this is the yellow little tab. That's the background. So I'll take the sunset and make that the background. And we don't see anything yet. And this is because we still have prime at showing in our second window. So what I can do is simply click on merge and press the number two. And there is our actress. And we also have the background and we've got the green screen cleaned up. I'm going to click once in our flow area to deselect everything. And to see how this looks, I'm going to come down here to the base, simply click the play button and as it's rendering through, it's going to be moving pretty slow. But basically, that is how you use Fusion, uh, working with the nodes and working with the different tabs there. And especially, that's how you use Primat. It's a pretty awesome keyer as far as getting rid of the green screen. It did a lot of the work for us, and we only had to tweak a little bit. But again, this is a free program and you should definitely go and download it. So let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We're getting ready to release a course uh, showing the intro. Like if you're looking for beginner tutorials on how to use Fusion, we're about to release a full course on that. And we'll be showing motion graphics as well as how to use particles, a little more keying. Uh, we're even going to throw in a couple little matte painting or it's not matte painting shots. So this has been Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com. Remember, make art, not excuses. Now go make something. Have a good one.